We now have possible medical advancements for penises. That oh, is for those who might have lost their penis because of uh, a traumatic injury or someone who might have a genital defect or someone who might, had, might have had penile cancer and lost their penis as a result of that. Now, researchers from the Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine have looked into growing penises in the lab, which is really fascinating. Now, this is a serious story. Every time I say penis, I feel a little clownish. No, no, I mean, are you know, kidding me? Hard. When you said genital defect, I thought, no, well, I mean, does, does that count if it's too, a defect that makes it too large? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now, serious story about penises and laps. Okay. This is actually a good story, okay? Because there is one particular researcher, Dr. Anthony Atala. He's at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine. And what he's been focusing on since the early 90s is how they can do penis implants that are actually effective, that actually work. Now, in the past, if someone had lost a penis uh, as a result of penile cancer or something like that, they had very few options when it came to implants. And I'm going to read to you what those options are, okay? Sexual function can be restored with a penile prosthetic placed inside. The prosthetics can be either malleable rods with the penis left in a permanently semi-rigid state and thus difficult to conceal, that sounds terrible, or inflatable rods which have a saline pump housed in the scrotum. Both technologies have been around since the 1970s. The aesthetics, as you can imagine, are crude and penetration is awkward, right? Mm -hmm. So this researcher, uh, Dr. Atala, is like, well, how can we make this better, right? Now mm -hmm. there's another option, and the other option has to do with actual penis donors, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of people actually, uh, their bodies will reject it. I'll give you the details on that. Another option is a penis transplant from another individual, but this carries the risk of immunological rejection. The chance of organ death can be lessened with anti-rejection drugs, but these drugs have serious side effects. So what can you do? What he's trying to do is take a penis that has been donated by someone, right, and strip it of its cells and then use the cells of the person who needs the penis. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's a really complicated way of doing this, but uh, the technique was pioneered for biological skin dressings. He would take a donor penis and soak it in a mild detergent of enzymes for a couple of weeks to wash away the donor cells. And then later he would use the cells of the individual who needs the penis. That way the body is less likely to reject it. Now he's already tried this on rabbits and it has worked successfully. So he's gonna try to do this on human beings as well, but at fir first he needs approval from the FDA. Now, I'm gonna do an ode to science, but before I do, for the 12% of you thinking, who would donate their penis? They're already dead. Yes. Okay, all right, so there's organ donations that people give. I filled out a card, so I suppose yeah. they can take anything of mine once I pass away. Uh, now, I love science. Yeah. I mean, you, we have a debate in this world between religion and science, and science is generally losing. <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about miracles. You want to talk about miracles. We can regrow your penis. It's not, it's not even about regrowing a penis. It's about taking someone else's penis. You can literally strip cells from that penis and then use your own cells so your body doesn't reject it. And I that's think, why I call it regrowing, because it's your cells. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's you know? Yeah. I mean, look at how miraculous this is. And, but it's not, it's science. I know. You figure out facts, you apply those facts, and you come to amazing conclusions. Yeah. And look, I'm biased here because, one, of course, I've left a religion. Mm -hmm. well, we've talked about that a little bit over the last couple of days. But uh, two, because science saved my life. Uh, I had a, a, a very serious skin condition that if I had it before the 1970s, you know, it wasn't like it was life-threatening when I had it, but if I had it before the 1970s, I almost certainly would have died. Oh my God. Okay, so thank God that the science came up with medicines that could combat it, and actually, since I had it, they've gotten much better at it, and it's easier to treat, better, you know, treatment, etc. So, and I know countless people whose lives have been saved by science. Yeah, I mean, right? think about think about vaccines for things that, you know, prevent polio and tuberculosis and all of these, like, you know, illnesses that you can get that, you know, you don't have to worry about now because of advancements in the medical field and because of scientific research. It's so incredibly important. That's why I love that documentary about the Higgs boson because it really focuses in on why 
we need to fund basic science because basic science is the fundamental uh, fundamentals of, of everything that we see around us today. Now, it doesn't mean that every scientist is right on every single issue. No, they're of always course. right. <laughs> okay, and of course, we're, we're infants in developing uh, our knowledge base, right? I mean, we've only been around for a tiny period of years in the scope of the universe. So we're trying to piece this thing together. So sometimes theories go awry, etc. But overall, would you rather put your faith into something that can be proven and something that you can see are facts and, and through acquired through hard work and knowledge, etc. Or, I don't know, I think there's a sky god somewhere and I'm gonna put my life in his hands instead of actually worrying yeah. about what the realities on the ground are. It's a no-brainer. Unfortunately, again, overall, we're losing that debate worldwide. Yeah, so I wanna give you some more facts, though, because what this, uh, what this scientist is doing is absolutely incredible. So just quickly going back to the whole penis thing. Um, he wants to give us a really clear analogy so we understand what he's doing with his, uh, with his research. Think of it, referring to the penis, like a building. If you remove all the furniture and the people, you're still left with the main structure of the building. Then you replace the tenants with new ones, referring to the cells. That's the whole idea. It's just that the building is a penis and the tenants are cells. Love this guy. Yeah. All right, now some I more. I mean, some are buildings, of course, and some are sky rises. <laughs> what am I going to do with this guy? Uh, I'm trying to give you guys information, okay? Let me give you more, okay. okay? Atala has engineered half a dozen human penises, although they are not ready for transplanting. And just to give you a sense of other things he's worked on in the past, in 2006, Atala and his team announced the first successful bioengineered organ transplant, a bladder, which has been implanted into seven patients since 1999. Earlier this year, he announced a successful follow-up of four women given bioengineered vaginas in uh, 2005 to 2008. Bananas. That's unbelievable, man. And a lot of people will be like, oh, God did not intend for artificial penises and vaginas. Well, then why did he allow us to discover the facts that allowed us to make them, right? Sorry. Sorry. Science! Now she 